I'm Sandy Pendland of MIT, and we're here at Hub Culture in Davos talking to Faye Zhu of Helios Data about something amazing that they're doing, which is the ability to take big corporations, protect the personal data in the corporation, and yet free the data that is aggregate data that's not personal data so that corporations could do things about it. Do you want to tell us about this, Faye? Yes, Sandy, thank you very much. So we're actually very excited to develop this uh, technology platform. So we're working with some uh, traditional company with a huge amount of uh, data reserves. So what we do is using our technology first to help them identify all these personal items, personal data, and then what we do is help them, once it's being identified, we actually help them to productize data usage. And then introducing the system that's been working very well in the financial industry to provide incentives to encourage individuals to invest their personal data in these very well articulated data product. And then at the end, everybody gets what they needed. So a company who actually have the need to use the data actually get the data they wanted as long as they're willing to pay the right price. And the individual, for the risk of using their data, they actually get fairly compensated, just like in the financial market. So let's do a concrete example, because this, this is all complicated. So let's imagine that you've got a health service and it yes. has all these health records, but health records are very private. Yes. And now you're a drug company and you'd like to actually look at all the health records so you can do the right sort of drug development and really target it, uh, you know, develop things for the right sort of things. But, but how do you square that, that problem? Or how do you get access to the data but without encouraging uh, use of private data? Yeah, you know, that's a wonderful uh, question to ask because I think before there's a clarification of a data ownership, health data or personal health data will never be allowed to be transacted, to be traded in the current data economy. But with the framework we're developing, what we can do is, for example, Pfizer needed data to develop a cancer-fighting drug. They need the data. So what they do is National Health Organization, whatever health services of the country, can do the due diligence, make sure the product is very well structured. And then they offer that product to the people or their members and then literally invite them to invest their personal health data that Pfizer requires, right, as an investment product. So in that way, they get fairly compensated. So in a way, whether they get a first use when the drug is developed or they get a permanent discount for whatever the drug is going to be sold in the future. So at the same time, Pfizer get the data they wanted, so therefore they can train whatever model or whatever drug testing. And National Health maybe get a compensation, you know, from the drug company to continue fund their services. So, so how uh, people are going to be cynical about this, right? So, how do I know as somebody who says, okay, I'll try contributing my data to get that great cancer drug that's that's perfect for me? How do I know that I'm going to get value from this, or my family is going to get value? Well, you know, this is actually the whole notion of a personalized drug, right? Drug need to be you know, trained by the data that actually belong to certain people to know whether it actually can work for the particular health condition of that particular person. So this is the way, but at the end of the day, a, pers a single person's data is actually not going to be helpful. This is helpful. That's why we create this, you know, construct. It's called, in this particular case, we can call it healthcare data product. So we invite a lot of people to come in. This is the people who actually are the target audience of the drug company through the fiduciary, the due diligence from the National Health Service, from the experts there. So this is actually, we create a closed loop solution to this. Okay, but still, how do I know that they're not going to just take the data and oh, run? Oh, you know, this is actually, I think now I got, I got it. So this is all related to secure data sharing. So this is where we actually develop technology that the data that's being shared can be monitored real time. And then the data cannot be used with another purpose. And then at the same time, we actually create another mechanism that the data cannot be recopied or redistributed. So you're oh, okay. So this is like you're taking all this data and you're really making the GDPR data protection stuff works, where I know precisely what's happening with my data. I can control it, and I can only share when it's going to help me. Right? Exactly. So we're leveraging GDPR, the data privacy regulation, to create an open, transparent data market. At the end, instead of anti-business, instead of anti-AI, we create all the precondition for AI to flourish. Because at the end of the day, the biggest constraint for AI development is not a privacy, it's availability of data. When there's an open, transparent market, the data can be bought and sold 
with the security, the AI will get developed. So what you're doing is you're permitting this sort of data economy by guaranteeing people the rights that come from GDPR, right? That's what we call the, the clean data economy. Okay, thank you very much, Fei Zhu of Helios Data, and thank you, Hub Culture here at Davos. Thank you.